man says that it's impossible, when your mind says that it's impossible, when all the circumstances around you saying it's impossible, God is saying yes. Uh, God is saying it is possible with me. It might be impossible with man, but I want you to know it's not impossible with God. would testify to bring glory to their king. How I love to hear the stories, how the Lord brought victory. But how happy I'll be when eternally I'll hear the untold stories. Untold stories of His grace that He poured out. something about praising the Lord. Amen. I truly believe that we can receive wonderful things from the Lord when we praise Him, when we worship Him. At the same time we're blessing Him, He's blessing us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I praise Him and I thank Him for being with me too. I had a, a doctor's appointment today and just want to thank God that He was with me and so far so good with all they did so I just want to thank God for that um, some of the things I need clearance um, for if, if I go through with this surgery I, I'm believing God for he can do anything hallelujah and I'm putting my trust in him amen I, I definitely would rather have him do the surgery that's for sure <laughs> any day praise the Lord and I thank him though for his faithfulness and in times of where, you know, you, you've got to put your trust in Him and you just got to lean on His Word and know that He'll see you through. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful, praise God, for all the times that He has seen me through and He has given me the victory. I praise Him. He is our victory. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Without Him, we would not be here and I know that I wouldn't be. God has been so merciful to me. Praise Him for His wonderful love. Praise the Lord. He is so faithful. Turn to 1 Timothy. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy. And I was just thinking today, you know, driving. Beautiful day. Just a beautiful day. And I, I think of, you know, some of the things you think of, first of all, because, you know, we... You know, we've really been through some things the past year, and um, but so many people are really going through it too, you know. And I'm not just talking about the virus, which it really is. It's got a hold on our country, um, and so many people are hurting, but I just wanted to stop and, you know, thank God for His mercies. I wanted to thank Him. You know, because really none of us deserve his mercies as, you know, Lisa was expressing. You know, we're, we're not worthy of it. But, you know, thank God that through him we are found worthy. And it's only because of Jesus. And I praise him for, for all that he has done and what he's doing right now. Amen. Amen. Even in the midst of all the, the things that are going on in our world, it's wonderful to know that you have a you have an assurance of your God. And I thank God that I can put my hope, I can put my trust 
and I can lean on him. Amen. That's what we need to do. We've got to learn to lean on the Lord. Amen. And know that he will show us things. As, as Troy mentioned, you know, sometimes, you know, he reveals things to us so that we can see. Maybe it, it's to open our eyes or to reveal something in our heart and our life that he wants, you know, us to draw closer to him or whatever. You know, God wants us First of all, to be thankful, you know, to have a, a thankful heart and a heart of gratitude and to worship him and to let others know that, no, we're, none of us are perfect, um, but through Christ Jesus, I'm striving to be perfect. Amen. I want my life to be an example of his goodness and his mercies, and I want to show that to others and what I say, what I do, and how I live my life. You know, every part of our lives, that's what we're looking for. And a lot of times I, I feel in the world we're living in today, that's, you know, that's really not where it's at, where people's focus is. You know, I just, some of the things you see in our world, and yes, it is broken, but we can point people to Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what I want to do. First Timothy chapter 1 there, and I'm going to start reading at verse 15. This is Paul. It says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy. I want you to see that. He says, Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy. That in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Hallelujah. Powerful scripture. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. Lord, we know, God, without you, Lord, God, we would have nothing. We would be nothing. God, for salvation, for deliverance, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that we can turn to you, Lord. God, I pray this nation. Lord, I pray this church. God, that we would ever be turning to you, Jesus. Lord, for your mercies, for your power, for your glory, for your spirit, Lord, because we are that example, as Paul declares in this scripture, Lord. Let us, Lord God, be, Lord God, that light shining forth, Lord. And Lord, let us receive of your touch today, Lord God, that we would be, Lord, like you are, Jesus, Lord, merciful, reaching out to those that are in need, Lord. And I pray that you give us a heart, Lord God, to reach out to those that are lost. And I pray this, and I pray you'd use me, Lord, to preach your word, to declare it, Lord. And God, I just give you glory and I give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Paul wanted to get across, you know, there were those that maybe didn't know Paul's background, um, didn't know of you know his testimony really this is Paul sharing his testimony letting those know that where he once was in his life once where um, God had got a hold of him he was the one that was persecuting the church one that was lost blinded and you know you can read that in the in the scriptures on the road to Emmaus or I mean on the road to Damascus when he was there struck by the light, Jesus Christ himself appeared unto Paul and, and, and revealed unto him what he was doing. And, and it says that Paul became blinded. He could not see physically. You know, spiritually we can see there are many that are blinded spiritually. The worst place you could ever be is, you know, if you are blinded spiritually and you cannot see. I know it would be a terrible thing, thing uh, physically to be blind, but really what would, is the worst is those 
that are lost and they're they're leaving this world. We were just talking about that today. Many, you know, that have gone through this sickness and this, you know, and, and any kind of thing that where they don't know to come to Jesus Christ to be lost. For eternity. I don't want to be blinded. I want to be able to see spiritually. And it talked about how, you know, Paul, um, well, he was Saul turned to Paul, but, you know, three days there, uh, you know, and, and Ananias went to pray for him. And it says that scales came off of his eyes. Oh, do we ever need that kind of manifestation? You know, really in the church and in the world, we need it both. We need to see these kind of manifestations in our lives. And this is why Paul was declaring it. He wanted to know that, that he felt that he was, you know, the, the biggest sinner there ever was. Uh, you know, a lot of times we look at people or we'll think, and, and I know we probably are all guilty. We think that it's just impossible for that person to come to the Lord. You know, they're lost. They're, they're you know, I said it the other day, they're a heathen. They don't know God. They, they, they blaspheme. They, they do all these things in their lives and they, they don't realize that they need a Savior. Well, this was the same way in Paul's life. He was letting all of them know that, yes, he, it was because of what Christ had did for him. He obtained mercy. Aren't you thankful for the mercies of the Lord? Hallelujah. It says, for as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. There's one thing I want to do tonight. I want to have the fear of the Lord. We need more of the fear of God in our lives. And we definitely need the fear of the Lord in our nation. Yes. Oh God, let us turn back that we would see that it's only because of God and I truly believe it's because of His mercy that He holds back. Uh, that He don't pour out His wrath upon us. God has been merciful to this country. Yes. Amen. Oh, thank God for His mercies. It says that it... And it says in the word that it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. And, you know, we can find ourselves getting busy. You know, we have a life. We, we go from day to day. We find ourselves, you know, going to work, doing this, doing that. And I, I kind of caught myself there today where I was just going by. And I, I have to say, I felt the joy of the Lord. I had, I had the joy of the Lord. I felt it rest. I felt it peace. You know, I want you to know it's a wonderful thing. You go through your day and you have clarity of mind. You have the peace of God because the devil is coming on strong. And he's trying to take that. Most of all, I believe he's trying to take that from the believer. And I will say the devil came, uh, came uh, at me, you know, when Shannon went through this. And there was great, uh, you know, there was great uncertainty. And there was some things in my life. And I thought, Lord, there's one thing. I don't want to depend upon a drug for my joy. I, don't, I want to depend on you, Lord. I want my peace. I don't want to lean upon the things of this world to get me by. I want to lean on your word. I want to feast in your presence. And I've got to turn on some worship music. Whatever I've got to do, Lord, let me have my mind fixed on you. And that's just where I was at today. I kind of had my mind on some things. And it was just like the Lord was bringing me back to say, Hey, you need to take some time. And you need to thank me. You need to worship me. Every day, our hands should be lifted high. Giving Him praise and glory for all that He has done in our lives. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. It's, it's salvation. We have received it, and that's what Paul was declaring. He was saying that first it was Jesus Christ that showed forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him, life everlasting. 
Oh, praise God that I am saved. Hallelujah. I've been washed in the blood. It's not by the things that I have done that I have received this, but it's because of what Jesus Christ has done. And I have received Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. Hallelujah. And my sins are under the blood. Do I have a witness? Yes. Hallelujah. Titus 3, 5 says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. I saw a, a sign that says the only ghost that lives in this house is the Holy Ghost. And that's just the way that I want it to be. I want the Holy Ghost. I know that it's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. The reason that I stand here and I give Him the praise, the reason why you're here tonight, it's because of Jesus and His love. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Praise God that we can receive that. And I think today, I think of, you know, the things that are going on in our country. I, I think of really the, the, really the things that we have done. You know, there's been a lot of things uh, and are still taking place. So it really moves me. Just the other day I was in the restaurant and, uh, you know, they had, there was a family over there in the, in the corner there where we were sitting. And they had this, it, it just had to be days old. It just looked like a little teeny, teeny baby. And I look, I was with Doug and Tara and his mom and dad. And, and, and I looked over and I said, you know, think of that. I, I have to, right away I think of that little child. You know, this is what man wants to do. These little babies want to abort them. At that age, fully developed, fully ready to come out of the womb and they're wanting to kill them. And I think of all the ones beforehand that have gone and I want you to know it's God's mercies that has been upon this nation Amen. to think of all those precious children because hey uh, it's the, the mercies of God that I can be called mom amen sometimes he calls me mother all the time <laughs> I said I used to be called mama what happened to that now it's mother <laughs> but it's the mercies of God and thank God hallelujah Matthias wasn't aborted but God had a plan for his life hallelujah and it was for me and Shannon I always think of that, you know, places we would go and Matthias was real young. Well, we would tell Matthias' story, well, you know, from the very beginning we told his story when we go into churches and even before we got up to test, of, you know, to share in the, our ministry, we would go into churches and I remember one church, you know, well, you know, this, this man came up and he goes, well, we know who that baby looks like. He looks like his mother. And then when we got up to share the whole thing, you know, it really is to show you that God is a wonderful Lord. Amen. He's great. Hallelujah. And he works wonders. Amen. And, and other places we would go where they would say, Matthias and I looked alike. And I think God had something to do with that. Hallelujah. And, and I know that it's the mercies in the hand of the Lord. And, but I think of our country. I think of the things that have happened in our nation. And I say, Lord, it's your mercies every day. I think just going down the road. Driving your vehicle down the road. Amen. I thank God for his mercies. You know, we think of all kinds of things and, you know, sickness or whatever. But, you know, we take a chance just by getting in our vehicle. Yes. 
And it's God's hand. It's his mercy. It's his love. I want to be a, 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 I want to be that kind of person that has that love and that has mercies new every day. Hallelujah. You know, we're living in a world where it's not so easy to have that kind of mercy. Because we're in an unmerciful world. I want you to know. I you it doesn't you, something, you know, the people that are in the and, and the you know that are up there, maybe, you know, I could give some from some examples just lately a coach, he lost his job with something that he said, and I'm thinking, you know, down the line there's been other stars, you know, that have said one thing and then it's ruined their whole career. There was no mercy given to them. And I want you to know, that's the kind of world that we're living in. Turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Jesus said in here, third, verse 36, starting at verse 36, it says, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful, you know. Now, I want you to know there's a times where, you know, we're not always merciful. I, I can remember, I forget how we did it, but we used to play a game with our hands. And they, you, you'd have to say mercy. For I remember we, we would play that here after church. And you'd have to cry out mercy because there was some way that they get you in that hold and they could bend your hands back and then you're going to be crying out for mercy. <laughs> Jesus said, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. There's one thing that we need in our heart. We need to have mercy. Amen? Because we serve a God that has been merciful to us. Amen. And there's one thing God is looking for us, that we would have that same mercy to those. We need sometimes to remember where we once used to be, where we were once lost in the darkness, where we were once uh, blinded by the enemy, but praise be to Jesus Christ, I've been saved, I've been made new by the blood of Jesus Christ, the old has been passed away, behold, he makes all things new. Thank God for his mercy. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 7, it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I want you to know when it comes time, and I, I really, I think of the, the illustration, you know, of some of the things, and I, I don't know, I know there's good people, I know there's good nurses and doctors, and there's a lot of, of people with compassion and mercy, but I want you to know, there's a lot of people that don't have it. And we're living in a world, a spirit that is in the world today. And I truly believe we need to look at how God, what God has done. You know, sometimes we just need to make a list. I, I bought this little calendar, and I didn't even realize, which it was a Christian calendar, a little you know, calendar I could keep track of some things. And, and I didn't even know. I looked in there today, and it said to write something that you're thankful for. And the thing that I wrote down is I said, I thank God that my husband is still here. And I thank God for you, Lord, for sparing his life and giving him life. Hallelujah. And healing his body. Hallelujah. I want you to know we have a merciful God. And I want you to know, I cried out for mercy. I even declared that scripture now where, where blind Bartimaeus, he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. They tried to shut him up, and all the more he cried out, have mercy. And I said, Lord, just as blind Bartimaeus cried out for mercy, I'm going to cry out for mercy that you would show your mercy to me. I want you to know he hears our cry tonight. Amen. He sees every situation in our lives and we can look to him and we can turn to him. 
You know, a lot of people won't have the same mercy as God. Most people, you know, really, we're we're very quick to, to, to lose our temper. We're very quick to, you know, give up on people. But we serve a God that doesn't give up. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he, he draws us and he speaks to us and he stirs us up sometimes when we need that stirring. I want you to know, I need the stirring just as much as you do. I need that stirring. I need the word of God. I need that encouragement. I need his Holy Spirit to come down on me just as much as you need it. We all need his presence and we need to feel that mercy come down and that will make us lift our hands and worship him and give him the praise. Yes. praise the Lord. Every day. For his mercies that he's given to us. And I truly believe that's where God wants us to be. I was reading there in, in the book of Nehemiah. Where it talked about um, you know, the, building, the rebuilding of the wall. And they gathered together. And it says that the people, they, they repented. They turned to God because they had turned away from God. And, and here they are, they're turning to the Lord, and they cry out. It, there in verse 9, verse 17, it says, and it says, they cried out and they said, but refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks. And in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and a great kindness. And forsook them not. You know, even in the midst when we turn away, God is looking for us. He, he, we need to remember that we turned away. We need to remember sometimes where we came from. And then we need to thank the Lord that he was merciful to us and that we would extend that same mercy to someone that needs it. Because yes. I want you to know there's a lot of people that need the mercies of God. You know, I, I think of it, and I, as some were sharing, and I'm, I'm, you know, sharing just with some things, and I know the Lord deals with my family. That God, God is dealing with them, knowing that they have to get their life right. They know there's certain areas of their life, as we were sharing about Andrew getting married, and and I know that's. You know, where God is speaking to, to our loved ones. You know, it's a wonderful thing. They're just not going idle by. But I know and I truly believe that it's His Word. His Word will find good ground and it will bring them back because it's His mercy. He doesn't want to see. It says that He's long-suffering to us and he, he wants all to come to repentance that they would receive the love of Jesus Christ. You know, people come in here and they'll, or should I say, I think it's everywhere. We kind of, you know, we look at those and we see and, what, you know, we might know something about their life and, and maybe, you know. But I truly believe that this, this church, we need to always remember that it is a hospital for the sick. And what I mean by that, those that are lost, those that don't know Jesus, this is where they can hear the truth. Now, there's one thing. I don't want them to be comfortable to stay in their sin. I don't want them to be feel comfortable just to continue in their lifestyle of sin. That's why we need to turn away from our sin. And I try to express that to those that, that need to hear that message. And really, we all need to hear that message because it is what has turned us to repent and to find Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
Joel 2.13 says, Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and He's merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repenteth Him of evil. He will give you deliverance. He will give you uh, mercies. Uh, as I just was reading in the Scriptures, they're new every morning. He gives those to us when the sun comes up. It's a new day that we can receive more of Him. We can draw closer to Him and we can receive of those mercies. And I was just sharing today kind of, you know, with what, you know, going to the doctors and, you know, not all of them, you know, I'm going to some new doctors. They don't know, you know, my history and then I'll go down the line and it's just amazing because really I know, um, most people, when you say ovarian cancer, and especially the age that I was, you know, 14 years old, I mean, they look at me, and especially when I tell them that God turned it around and it wasn't cancer anymore, um, they, they know, you know, and I, I tell them, it's like, God gets all the glory. He gets all the praise. He was merciful to me. Yes. There's one thing we've got to remember. We've got to remember His mercies. We need to think on all the things that God has delivered us from. And we could, we could write a list. I know that we all could write a list of the mercies of the Lord. And Paul was sharing that in the scriptures when he said, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. What Paul was trying to say is, hey, you can look at my life and you can see the mercies of God. You will see an example that you can follow because a God has done great things. If anyone knew who Paul used to be, he knew that he was against the church. He was murdering Christians. But praise be to God now, he's a servant of the Most High God and he's preaching the Word of God and he's declaring, hey, you can follow me and my example and how I am living living my life. And Shannon preached Sunday night. He talked about that. It's a wonderful thing when you have someone you can walk in their footsteps. You have them as an example to follow. I want, I want to leave that behind in my life. When I'm dead and gone or whatever... You know, whatever my time comes, there's one thing I want it to be that those that knew me, that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and He has been merciful to me. And they will know that because of the life that I have lived. Paul declared it in 1 Corinthians 4, 16 and 11, 1. It says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Philippians 3, 17 says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. He's saying, hey, look at our lives, and you can walk in this way. Serve the Lord. Live for Him. Read the Bible. Spend some time in prayer. Reach out to, to, your, to your neighbor. Reach out to those that are hurting. Uh, uh, call someone up and encourage them or invite them to church and give them that same love and that same mercy that someone gave to you. I'm so thankful for all the things that God has done. And there's one thing that I truly believe. God wants us to have mercy. And as I said here tonight. In a world where it seems to be less and less of his mercy. We need to have that mercy in our heart. That we would give it to someone that's in need. Let's think on the things that God has done for us this, just this week, think on some things where He has been merciful to you. And I know many a times just 
uh, you know, as I said, driving and certain things I can think of on how he was merciful to us and he protected us and he watched over us. Think on those things. Think on the day that you received him as your Lord and Savior and he brought you back into the kingdom of God and now you're serving him. Think on the wonderful mercies of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 to their needs how I love to read these